Hey guys, are you ready for an all new My Top 10 video? Yes, I'm glad you said yes. So, but before we get started, if you want to continue seeing videos on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And also, feel free to leave any comments about your favorite My Top 10 and if you have any other suggestions for topics for My Top 10 videos. So, if you know me, you know I absolutely love sports and I love movies. So why not do a video about my top 10 sports movies? And in honor of this video, I am wearing my favorite Yankee baseball cap. It is also my lucky one that I wear during my field events. And uh, there we go. It's also in honor of the 2017 World Series that the Dodgers and the Yankees should have had. But anyways, going back to my top 10 video. Um, I narrowed it, it was so hard to narrow this down to just 10 because there are so many great sports movies. So the way I did it was based on my favorite sport plays, my favorite storylines, as well as just movies that I can watch pretty much every time they're on. So, are you guys ready? And don't forget, if you have your own list of my top 10 um, sports movies, comment them below. Alright, ready? Let's go! Little Big League was all about the grandson of a baseball team owner finding out that when his grandfather passed away, he was left a team. And I believe he was like in middle school. So you go one day from being a normal middle schooler to now owning your own team. So come, here comes more responsibilities. And with that responsibility comes a lot of baggage. And then you become, then you fire. Then you fire the manager. So now you're the manager. So he had a lot of ups and downs. And players not supporting him, but then supporting him, firing some of his favorite baseball players. And then, but then in the end, it all worked out. Um, and then, but my fate, the reason this is on my list is because it had one of the best plays in baseball, which was the ball sneak, which he had the pitcher throw the ball to the first baseman, and the first baseman pretends he missed it. So the ball is not like, you know, out running around. So you have all these players running around. They even have the security guard in on it. And all in all, the pitcher still had the ball. So the guy is running around the bases thinking that, oh, this is easy. Nope, he made it out. If you haven't seen that play, you have to go look it up. That's why Little Big League is really on this list, but I do love it. I love the storyline and I need to watch it again. Now, like Mike, could do no wrong. I mean, you had Little Bow Wow, Brenda Song, Jonathan Lipinicki, um, Morris Chestnut, and so many other um, people in it. And I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a basketball fan, but I did love this movie. Because it was all about finding a family because you didn't have one. So you basically formed your own. And it was all about a orphanage kid. My, um, not Mike, but Little Bow Wow's character. Um, getting these pair of sneakers that happened to be Michael Jordan's sneakers. And he wanted to be like Mike and he became a superstar basketball player. Then meets his future father, 
who adopts him in the end. I love this because it has everything. It has drama, it has some comedy, it has family, it has sports, and all in all, it's just a feel-good, great movie with a happy ending, of course. And of course, there always has to be a bad guy who is only in it for the money, not in it for his well-being. Um, but all in all, this is a great movie. And it was just a great movie from childhood, too. So, like, like. Now, the game plan was also on my list for my Disney live-action movies. Um, but I loved this, and I... And I loved this because it wasn't all about football, but it was also about family and a little girl reuniting with a father she never knew, um, and he didn't know he had a daughter. It was just so cute, and I loved it because it showed this tough, big football star quarterback learning a about the fact there's more to life than football. Because there is. There is more to life than a game. And it also helped him learn to use other players, that he's not the only player on the field. And it was just a feel-good movie. I remember going to the movie theaters with my dad to watch it, and it just had a great smile on my face at the end. It's just one of those movies that I could definitely watch every time it's on. And I actually watched it last week. And then maybe a couple days ago. I'm telling you, great movie. So again, I'm not a basketball fan. But I like their movies. And I definitely enjoyed this one because you had Michael Jordan and then you had the Looney Tunes. Um, I honestly, truthfully, if I had to be honest, I really don't know why this movie is so good. <laughs> like, it's one of those movies that you honestly can't explain why you love it so much. And I can't. I can't explain it. I think it's just because I love the Looney Tunes, I love Bucky Bunny, um, and even though I'm not a basketball fan, I was always a fan of Michael Jordan. I guess that's really it. Michael Jordan meets the Looney Tunes, um, and he helps them save their world because of the aliens that come and want to take over. And it also shows uh, Michael Jordan's try at baseball, which he did not do very well with. Um, but yeah, Space Jam is just one of those classics that needs no explanations. Alright. Now this one is a classic. It is, if you ask any baseball fan... This is definitely going to be on their list of all-time favorite sports movies, of all-time favorite baseball movies. And it is The Sandlot. I know, it's in the middle of the list. What am I thinking? It should be higher. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love it. It has baseball. It has us. Uh, uh, a dog. A ginormous dog that ends up not being that big in the first place. Um, it has Benny Rodriguez, the character's name. I used to have a huge crush on him. He's also in another movie that's on this list. Um, I forget what his real name is, but I had a... I mean, who didn't have a crush on Benny Rodriguez in the sand lot? I mean, come on. But it was all about a new kid trying to fit in, and then learning all about baseball, and then also trying to please his stepfather. Um, but, I mean, 
all in all, it's a great, great movie about just kids having fun playing baseball in the sandlot behind a very ferocious dog that turns out not to be ferocious um, and owned by no one other than James Earl Jones. I mean, you can't, you can't go no, can't go wrong with James Earl Jones in a movie. Really can't. So, The Sandlot will forever be a classic. And the sequel, I like the sequel, kinda. It was okay. And then the third, there was a third movie which, again, was okay. I think this was one of those movies that did not need a sequel. Unless they had the, the regular, the, the characters from the first one. Now, if you know me, you know I love dogs. So, you're probably going to find this hysterical that I have this on this list. I also had it on my live action Disney movies list. But it's not just about the first movie. It's about the five movies. Um, it's all about the Air Bud franchise. I mean, you have this golden retriever able to play sports. That's why this is on this list, because every movie had it him playing a different sport. I love this movie. I want to teach my dog how to do the sport, especially since my dog is named DJ, named after Derek Jeter, baseball player, Yankees, hello. But he, 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 does, he can catch a ball. That's all I got so far. But I love the Air Bud movies, because every movie we learn more about the dog. Um, we learn more about his talents. The first one was basketball. And then I think the second one was soccer or football. And then it was soccer or football. Um, and, then, and then it started out all about the son, the boy who I... Absolutely loved Kevin Seegers growing up. I did have a huge crush on him in these movies. And then the next to last one was about his sister um, and baseball. She and her friend wanted to find extracurricular activities and baseball happened to be one of them. And then the last one was about beach volleyball because she wanted... Her friend, her friend moved to California or Florida, one of those beach areas, and they wanted her to visit, so what better way than playing beach volleyball? And I loved all these movies, and I consider them being the five, the, the five, because I don't really, I don't think I've really watched the um, basically spin-offs with the talking dogs. Um, but I think out of the five, the baseball one is my favorite because I just love baseball. And I love the story about Buddy trying to save his sons, his um, and daughters, his kids, who happen to be all talented as well. So I love the Air Bud movies. Don't judge me. I love surfing movies. Like, I absolutely love, love surfing movies. If I wasn't afraid of water, like, um, like I don't like going underwater, I would so try adapt to surfing. Because I absolutely love surfing movies. And Blue Crush, yes, because surfing is a sport. Blue Crush is definitely one of my favorite surfing movies. Um, it's one of those movies where I don't really have a reason. I think it's just a great storyline of getting over your fears, which is kind of funny because I am fear of going underwater and 
but I love surfing movies, and this is my one of my favorite surfing movies, and it's all about going, getting over your fears, but, I mean, it is what it is. But it's, it's just, it's about, yeah, that's really it. Because she drowned, she almost drowned, and then she sort of got afraid, but she was also trying to keep her and her friends and her sister afloat while falling in love with a football player that happened to be there for the for vacation. So, I love Blue Crush. I do. Now, similar to Little Big League, this movie was all about a kid, an everyday kid, who played baseball for his Little League team, suddenly finds himself on the Cubs. Yes, I'm talking about Rookie of the Year. Again, this is one of those movies that if you talk to anyone who wants to talk about their favorite sports movies, this would be definitely one of them. And again, there's no real reason why. I think it's basically because it is one of those movies where it's like, that is definitely a dream to have when you're playing Little League, is to play professional baseball, to play, to play in the MLB. But, but to do it as a kid, that goes up and beyond. Because now you're not only living out your future dream very early on, but you're also playing with your heroes. You're playing with your favorite players, like The Rocket. Um, you know, The Rocket, played by Gary Busey. Um, it's just overall great. It also shows um, single parents, how, they, how she raised her son, um, while dating a jerk. Who like in like Mike only used him used the son so he could get money. A lot of these movies have similar similar storylines. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But anyways, I love Rookie of the Year because in the end he realized that he's just a kid and he wants to be a kid. He he then he enjoyed playing with the big guys. He enjoyed living out his dream. But it's going too fast. He should be hanging out with his friends. And yeah, that's really the moral of the story. And he also finds out that his mom was the player that she always talked about. She always tried to make his dad seem like this amazing baseball player, but he wasn't. It was her. So. The Rookie of the Year, everybody. Rookie of the Year. Now, this one, I'm going to talk about all three movies and it's about hockey and it's about Emilio Estevez um all about the Mighty Ducks this is and I actually just watched it um I actually watched the first one last week and then the second one was on the other day I absolutely love these movies I grew up on these movies and it was just it's fun, and you, it's all about the hotshot lawyer who got in trouble and needed to do community service, so he had to go and um, become this peewee hockey team uh, coach. He hated it at first, but then he loved it. And then the second movie is all about um, the Junior World Championships, um, and he ends up getting big in his head, but comes back to light in the end. And then the third one was all about 
uh, the team going to a high school that made them feel unwanted. And Emilio Estevez's character, Gordon Bombay, was not their coach. So they had to get used to a new coach um, that was hired specifically for their team. And then they had to go against the varsity team. Um, but all in all, Gordon Bombay was in it, the third one. He made everything better, as he always does. Um, but it's just overall a feel-good family movie about hockey. And I love the flying bee. And I love the characters in it, again. I don't... In the second movie, again, I don't remember his, his real name. But he'll always be Benny Rodriguez from the Sandlot. But he was in Mighty Ducks 2 and 3. Um, but I loved him more in the Sandlot, I think. But anyways, um, I love the Mighty Ducks. They'll always hold a place in my heart with the movies. Um, yeah. Mighty Ducks, everyone. Quack, quack. We will, we will. Quack you. Watch the second movie, you'll get it. <laughs>
the monologue, which I thought was clever and amazing. And what's so cool is this season, the 2020 season, um, they're actually going to go play a game, an MLB game at the field, which I think is so cool that they kept the field. They didn't um, knock it down or anything. They kept, they kept it as the Field of Dreams field. Um, so kudos to the family that kept it, and then kudos to whoever bought it to keep it that way. Um, if you build it, he will come. Which was all about Kevin Costner's uh, character, Ray Kinsella, reuniting with his father in the end. Who knew? Who knew that was all about, it was all about when I was younger? I thought it was just about this crazy man that mowed the lawn down and created a baseball field and put his family in jeopardy. But as I got older. But I want to know something. How do they not turn into dust when they cross that path? Like Moonlight Graham. How do you not turn into dust? You just turn into a ghost? Mm -hmm. Like... There's a, there's a lot of questions in movies that will never be answered. But we don't need them answered. So if you haven't seen Field of Dreams, I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend watching with your family. Or at any time. Because even if you're not a baseball fan, you need to watch it. Especially now. Especially now. All right. I, I don't know how that always happens. I always end my top ten videos with emotions. I, I guess I, I, I just love these movies and topics so much that I get emotional once I reach the ending of the list. But um, there we have it. My top ten uh, sports movies. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope... This made you think or want to watch a baseball movie or a football movie or hockey movie or football, surfing, basketball, soccer, anything. Go put on a good sports movie and enjoy it. Whether you like sports or whether you hate sports, they're overall great movies. And if you have any, any suggestions or topics that you would like me to count down my top 10 of, please comment below and also make sure you comment below your favorite sports movies and characters and storylines and sports and overall anything that has to do with sports. Alright, again remember, put on a good sports movie and have some fun and kick back and watch it. And hit a home run while you're at it. <laughs> Bye, guys.